Alex, it's great to have you in the studio today. Thank you, Daniel. Very excited to be here. So I want to learn all about Qubit. Tell me, what does Qubit do? We are the first warehouse native product analytics platform designed for both product and data teams. We started this journey about five years ago, and we raised an $18 million Series A led by Insight Partners just last year. Uh, right now, we have several very big customers, and at any, any given moment, we're processing about 10 billion events a day and helping our customers to analyze more than 100 million of their monthly active users. So over the last year, we actually doubled our revenue. So it's a pretty good year for us so far. Wow, that is, that's impressive, and I love, I love those growth stories. So you mentioned you're a, a warehouse native solution. What does that mean? That means we directly connect it to the Snowflake data cloud, and uh, we utilize our customers' existing data model to give them the insights about their user behavior, what the user do, where do they engage, where do they retain, and where do they go afterwards. From your own words, you are processing a lot of data. That's Tell right. me, why did you choose Snowflake to build this platform on? Yeah. We Actually, explored the Snowflake started four years ago. And at the moment, uh, we chose it because it's the leading um, warehouse solution for the analytics market. And also, over the last several years, we realized there's a lot of new development on Snowflake, which makes a dominant player here. For example, the data sharing ability. A lot of our customers are super excited to use that feature with us because this gives them the full control of the, what data they share with us, but also helps them to um, prevent any kind of SLA impact or uh, isolate their data operations from a third party vendor like us. So I want to see how exactly Snowflake fits into the overarching architecture that you've built for this platform. Yeah, let's dive in. I have a couple of slides. So first of all, let's cover how the traditional product analytics solution work. So they, a lot of customers, they use CDPs or some other SDKs to collect uh, user behavior data, like a product data. And for a lot of traditional product analytics solutions, they require customers to send these data to their data warehouse, which is a siloed black box. But in the meantime, customers also collect the data into their own data cloud. So with this kind of a split, and we create a problem on governance and security. But also even worse is a customer may have a lot of other data they want to analyze together with product insights. So they have to do some ETL job to send the data over again. So, but in addition to that, a lot of these uh, third-party data, like your A-B testing, your um, custom acquisition, and the user acquisition data, they can never be easily unified with this kind of solution. And Qubit does everything very differently. So what do we call ourselves a data cloud native product analytics platform, which means our customer already will put a lot of these data into Snowflake. And we can directly connect to Snowflake or using the data sharing protocol, then we give our customers the insights about the full life cycle of their users, regardless if it's coming from behavior or operational data. And we, in, through this way, we serve not only product team, but also engineering, data science, and any of the marketing team as well. So it really seems like Snowflake, for a platform like this, Snowflake really helps you build out that scale uh, and security for your platform. Absolutely. Yeah, that's what we benefited from for the last four years and so, and we continue going to invest into that. And so from here, let's dive into a full-blown demo. Yeah, wonderful. Thank you. So before I jump in, I want to cover a little bit about the data model behind this demo. So as you can see, this is a logical ER diagram covering the different set of tables our customer have. But we do not mandate any of these to be existing. So customer can choose a different flavor, different design. But the key point here is not everything is captured through one single source. Right? With that said, let me take a look at the demo here. So this is our home screen or dashboard. So as you can see here, we are capturing uh, several um, KPIs, like how many daily active users the user customer have. And also for these streaming companies, they want to see uh, what is the most popular shows. So this is counting the watch minutes across many of their show titles. So there's a lot of other things I'm going to dive in a little bit later. Let's just go to see how the customers can build a query themselves quickly. That's the whole beauty of the self-service product analytics. So at here, as you can tell, we are counting a unique user of any event. And if I'm a product manager, I may come here and say, I want to add a filter, say country equal to a US. And in addition, I want to break this down by a UTM source, which is where the user come from. And just like that, you basically build a query counting your daily active users across the different UTM source channels for US users. So as you can tell, this 
data crunching happens very quickly in the real time. And behind the scenes, we're actually analyzing billions of rows of data all on Snowflake. So as you can tell here, I can easily tell um, which source give me the most users, like Google, Instagram, or Twitter, Facebook. And with, in addition to that, our customer can also very quickly analyze a funnel. Uh, funnel means a conversion between several steps of, in your app, right? So here you can see there's a main landing and there's a trial started. So with just these two simple clicks, now you can see a conversion funnel between these two steps, how many users converted, like you can tell here. It's roughly about 78% of users really converted. And this is how easy it is to build a funnel inside a qubit. In addition to that, sometimes it's a very open-ended question. You just want to see how users are flowing. So now I can build a path, which is essentially a Sankey diagram uh, showing where you, which path user takes between these two events, and which is pretty um, very self-explainable, right? You look at this, this shows you a journey of the users, how many take a different steps and convert it eventually. And on top of that, we have retention. So retention shows you uh, if a user take a starting event, how many of them come back any days later and what's the percentage of those. So that's usually called the retention rate. So with this, you can get a very familiar result of a retention triangle, which will break the user down by daily cohort. And each day, uh, what the user will do, uh, and also how many of them come back uh, in the subsequent days. So like I said, a lot of our customers, this is obviously a demo environment. But our customers like uh, Univision, like Wish, and also like uh, uh, Quizlet and Influence Mobile, they got a lot of insights through this kind of chart. For example, here, you can see on this May 31st, that cohort, uh, about 54% of users came back on day one and 47% on day two, right? And also, if you're interested to do that, you can also laser focus on this group of users by creating a cohort for that. So cohort meaning a second of users who did certain behaviors that you're interested in. So let me take another example here. What you can do is go back to the previous uh, funnel we built, like a main landing to trial started. But this time, I actually want to break down using different second users, for example. I want to see if someone add a show to the list versus another cohort of users who actually did a search, uh, let's say here. Search content, right? So with this, basically, I'm comparing two second users based on their behavior and analyzing the trial conversion rate between them. So if I show both two host cohorts together, you can tell anyone who added a show to the list has a much higher conversion than the one who just did the search content. So this is actually a very close to a real example. Our customer, like Univision, benefited from this. And they decided um, what to incentivize users to do, and which will lead to a very good KPI gain on their retention rate or conversion rate. So this is incredibly impressive on just how, one, quickly you can get up and running with between Qubit and Snowflake, but two, how easily you can really dive into the data and get those insights. Uh, this is a powerful platform that you've built. Thank you. I appreciate it. And so tell me more about some of the features of Snowflake that have really played a big role and brought you a lot of impact to building your platform. Yeah. I would say the number one is the data sharing. Right? We allowed our customer to share the, a subset of data, especially sharing a view. That's super powerful. And the other part is the whole materialized view. And nowadays, the development of the dynamic tables. It makes things much easier for our customer to build their own data model uh, and uh, reduce a lot of overhead on ETL management. And also, we're looking forward to the upcoming Snow uh, Park container service. That's actually one thing we definitely going to bet our company future on. This is uh, to make ourselves from a connected app to a native app. And because a lot of customers, even though they are using us through a very secure data share, they still feel it's not a good idea to let the data out of their control. While with a um, native app, we'll be able to deploy our Qubit application directly on our customer data cloud. So there's nothing will be leaving it, and there's no security government's concern anymore. You know, I, I love that you brought that up. I mean, it really is a game changer to have the combination of Snowflake native applications with Snowpark container services. I mean, being able to bring end to end any code that, you know, put it in a container and run it in Snowflake, and that entire container is, is hosted inside of your customer's environment, yeah. it gives them, like you said, that programmatic guarantee that their data doesn't leave. Mm -hmm. That's a game changer. Yeah. So, 
from here, what would you say over the next six to 12 months your customers should get most excited about? Yeah, I think uh, um, one of that is uh, um, in to the development of the AI and the generative AI um, approach into analytics, which is our roadmap, which is a scratch service. Uh, we're trying to use uh, an AI ability to do anomaly detection, but also more importantly, to analyze the charts generated here and interpret the results or the insights to our customers. So this is actually goes very well towards the Snowflake's roadmap to use an NVIDIA GPU to help the AI computation. So we look definitely looking forward to that development. Yeah, I'm excited about that too. I think that's, you know, being able to use NVIDIA GPUs directly inside of Snowflake, both for inference and for training, it's going to be a big, another game changer. Absolutely. And so Alex, where should people go to learn more about Qubit? Yeah, please go to our website, qubit.ai, or follow us on LinkedIn. We have a lot of recent uh, development and feature announcement in these places. Thank you. And so Alex, I want to say a big thank you for joining me in the studio today. It's been great learning all about the Qubit platform and how it's powered by Snowflake. Thank you, Daniel. It's been fun. And folks, if you want to learn how to build your next application on Snowflake, be sure and check out developers.snowflake.com. And if you want to see other interviews like this with technical leaders in the space, be sure and subscribe to our YouTube channel. My name is Daniel Myers, and this has been another episode of Powered by Snowflake.